Welcome to MEB. This is episode 17, The Molecular Method. Over the next three episodes, we will discuss three alternate methods for solving material balance problems involving a reaction. The first of these methods, the molecular method, follows closely from what we've done so far with non-reactive processes. Here, we perform material balances on molecules, and generation and consumption terms remain included in the general balance equation. Reaction stoichiometry gives the linkage between the generation or consumption terms for the different molecules. Take, for example, the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen. The balanced stoichiometric equation is 2H2O2 goes to 2H2O plus O2. By looking at this balanced reaction, we could see that for every two moles of H2O2 reacted, two moles of water will be formed. Therefore, the consumption of H2O2 is equal to the generation of H2O. Similarly, for every two moles of H2O2 reacted, one mole of O2 is formed. Therefore, we could say that the consumption of H2O2 is equal to twice the generation of O2. Finally, I can also say that the generation of H2O is twice the generation of O2, by either the exact same logic or the transitive property. Let's look at a short example problem. Suppose that 100 moles per minute of H2O2 goes into a reactor, and 30 moles per minute of H2O2 comes out of the reactor. Clearly, some of the H2O2 has reacted, so there will also be reaction products water and oxygen in the exit stream. Assume that the reaction described above is irreversible and the only reaction that occurs in the reactor. How would we solve for the molar flow rates of water and oxygen? It's a good idea to start, as always, with the degree of freedom analysis, which starts the same as usual by counting the number of unknowns. However, new to reactive processes, the extent to which the reactions proceed is another unknown variable. Generally, for the molecular method, you add a degree of freedom for each independent chemical reaction to reflect this. Accordingly, here we have to add 1 to the degrees of freedom. The number of material balances that we can write is the number of molecular species. Here we have hydrogen peroxide, water, and oxygen, which is 3. If process specifications or physical constraints apply, those are subtracted as well. In this case, however, there are neither, because the problem statement has no other information, and I've labeled the species flow rates instead of the total flow rate and composition. Therefore, DOF in this problem is 2 plus 1 minus 3 equals 0. The process is continuous, steady state, and reactive, so the material balances are all of the form in plus generation equals out plus consumption. The H2O2 balance is 100 moles per minute plus generation of H2O2 equals 30 moles per minute plus consumption of H2O2. Since the reaction is specified to be irreversible and H2O2 is a reactant, we could say that the generation of H2O2 is zero. Therefore, the consumption of H2O2 must be 70 moles per minute. The water balance is 0 moles per minute plus generation of H2O equals N2H2O plus consumption of H2O. Similarly, the reaction only generates water. It does not consume it. Therefore, consumption of water is 0 and generation of H2O equals N2H2O. Recall that earlier I looked at the stoichiometry and concluded that the generation of H2O is equal to the consumption of H2O2. Therefore, the moles of H2O coming out is 70 moles per minute. The oxygen balance is 0 moles per minute plus generation of O2 equals N2O2 plus consumption of O2. Again, oxygen is not consumed because it is only a product. Thus, the exit flow rate of oxygen is equal to the generation rate of O2. From earlier, we have that 2 times the generation of O2 equals the consumption of H2O2. Plugging in the numbers, the outlet flow rate of O2 is equal to 35 moles per minute. You might notice that I am not performing an overall material balance, and this is for good reason. For any reactive process unit, moles in does not necessarily equal moles out. This reaction is a great example, where now that we've solved the problem, you can see that 100 moles in does not equal 135 total moles out. The molecular method is a useful first method to learn because it extends logic from non-reactive to reactive systems nicely. However, it can be very complicated when there is more than one reaction involved. Unfortunately, in real-world chemical engineering, these situations are very common, 
and therefore you are better served becoming proficient in either of the methods that I'll cover on the next two episodes of Material and Energy Balances. Episode 17 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Use reaction stoichiometry, either given or deduced, to relate the generation or consumption terms of reacting species. 2. Perform a degree of freedom analysis for the molecular method. And 3. Use the molecular method to solve a reactive material balance problem. That'll conclude this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.